I'll be honest with you. I filmed this entire segment yesterday already, but the the weather was appalling, positively turgid, and when I came down to edit it this morning and looked at the clear, starry night, I thought it'd be worth another go. So this really is the last sunrise of 2009, <laughs> and there's a great sight over here. This is the busiest I've ever seen Crow Hill. People watching the sunrise here, but also if you look over to Arthur's seat there, there's absolutely, well, certainly dozens of people. Let me uh, set up camp for a review of 2019. A year that has had colossal highs, I would say the highest of highs, but in order to have colossal highs, you often have to have devastating lows, otherwise everything would just be middles. So I thought what would be fun would be to review not only the year, but the decade in the videos that I and we have been making. First, my top five moments of 2019 caught on film, starting with, well, of course, the beginning of 2019 meant a new start for us all, a new HQ. And I would like to say the motivation behind building the new HQ was a romantic one, but it was somewhat more practical. We had become, how do I say it, fecund in our production of poos. Too many people, not enough lose too many poos. So our initial relief, if you will, when moving into the HQ was a somewhat less odoury environment. But we have since made great use of the space to expand on our creativity, but also share some really good times with you guys. Second up, it was introducing a new family member, B, our little puppy, who has become a popular addition to these vlogs. My, my, how these things grow. A very special moment for me was re-recording the original felt piano, but this time in Air Studios. Air Studios is our spiritual home at Spitfire and being part of that family Family, even if it just be for two or three days at a time, is always very special. We found the piano that I recorded many, many years ago, which became the Lab's soft piano, probably our most successful release. And to have brought her down from the depths of Arbroath to see how she had aged, but, and also to try and capture the spirit of the original soft piano, but in the amazing surrounding of the hall, was a total honour. A Pyrrhic victory for me, and a real highlight, was being invited to host my own radio show on Radio 3, which for those of you who don't reside in the UK is a particularly kind of, it's very much an institution that's kind of quite proper and it's, it's all about classical orchestral music. And to be invited there as someone who really didn't complete his music education in a traditional sense was not only a very proud moment for myself, but also very good to see how much the classical world has come on within the UK. And it's great to be a part of of this new renaissance in orchestral music. And in the top spot, I don't think it's any surprise to you, is, is another BBC project, and that, of course, is BBC Symphony Orchestra. Such honour and pride to be able to take an orchestra and capture it in sample form, but again, a sign of very exciting times to come. If an orchestra as renowned as the BBC Symphony Orchestra recognises that this is the way that people connect with orchestras, the way that people orchestrate these days, there are good times ahead. And as I said earlier this year, this is just the beginning. There have been many high points of 2019, and indeed I would say the piano book experience has been a year-long highlight, not least with my visit down to visit Max down in Manchester, or indeed filming up in Colorado, which was a real treat. I've afforded piano book its own kind of review in the shape of a, well this is kind of new for me, an, an honours list, which will be coming very soon. For me, Piano Book forms the first of three key ambitions I have for Spitfire and my involvement with the music industry over the next decade, and that is a concept of perceiving sound as a third right for us composers. You've got your recordings, you've got your publishing, but some of us, not all of us, but some of us pride ourselves on making sounds. And I think this is something we should monetize, promote, enjoy and celebrate. So what's next, Shed Henson? Next up, my top five fave videos of the year, the first of which some of you may have missed. I don't know, when I travel internationally, you'd think that I would use the jet lag and the exhaustion of travelling as an 
excuse to maybe chill out a bit. But I always see, I think it's something to do with loneliness. I always give myself challenges that make my trips even more of a challenge. So I thought, seeing as I'm in Tokyo and am a long, long way away from my sample drops, that I would find something in my hotel room and see if I could make an entire track out of that one single object. A wine glass, which I have stolen. This one was really difficult. Not only was I trying to make a sample library out of a really shit wine glass that I found in my hotel room in Japan, but I also tried to create a video that was compelling and interesting, along with a piece of music made totally from this wine glass. So I have a strange grudging affection for it, like you would a kind of crying newborn baby. With the next one, I was really delighted that this became popular because it really was me making up science as I went along. What I did is I pulled it apart. And what I realised was that that kind of represents what we're doing when we're tuning stuff down. The real pleasure for me was, was there was a genuine interest in a question that hadn't been answered. And whilst we're on the subject of COD science, I took my COD science to another level when trying to come up with an excuse for why us keyboard players play ahead of the beat. You can see that I've played enough ahead of the beat so that the actual note forms on the beat. So that's my natural instinct. I'm quite chuffed with that, actually. And I guess the reason I look back on it affectionately is I didn't expect to prove, I think, you know, quite categorically my theory. And that was that we, we don't have a poor sense of timing. We just tend to learn on pianos and the mechanical nature of them mean that we do actually have to play ahead of the beat so that the pianos sound in time. And when we move on to these electronic triggering devices, we naturally play ahead, but unfortunately it sounds ahead. Modular Mondays was a little bit starty stoppy this year, something I'm going to rectify next year you wouldn't believe the stuff that I've bought over kind of Black Friday stroke the Christmas sales. So I'm looking forward to showing you all of those. But what I've really enjoyed on my modular journey is thinking out of the box. And this video was... me doing just that, seeing if I could change filters with my face or rather my voice. But the absolute winner for me is the... First, this happened. Ice Choir, which I actually did really early in 2019. This is where the local loch got frozen over and I threw ice on it and it was kind of staggered to find that it made this almost choral sound. So I went back very late at night and recorded it when there wasn't too much traffic to create this virtual ice choir. That's what I love about that video is that there's just the sheer romance of nature. Why is it an ice lake sounds like a kind of a children's choir and not say, I don't know, a peacock. It gave me a window into how I could make this vlog very successful, but I fear traveling around the world, finding music and sound in nature wouldn't make a good father of me. So that's maybe for a different lifetime. So what's next, Shed Henson? One of the greatest honors of this vlog is that I get to meet and talk to people and share war stories. These are in no particular order, simply my highlights of great conversations, not least our very own composers, Homai, Oliver and Louis. And again, learn things that are kind of quite surprising, that Oliver was going to be a professional footballer, for example. <laughs> Nathan Barr and his insane studio full of curiosities, but also what an incredible commitment to maintaining the heritage of Hollywood. It was a massive honour to welcome Rick Beato into the HQ at Spitfire and for him to give up so much of his precious time. Also, we went for some great meals and he really shared with me his visions and thoughts about YouTube and gave me some real kind of very important tips, some of which I've already applied to this vlog, some of which I've filed for next year. So proud of my brother Joe and his partner Alexis, their insane success writing scores for triple A games. So it was great that they welcomed me into their extraordinary workshop of a studio to talk about how they go about creating those incredible scores. But if I was to highlight a particular honour, it was the many conversations I had with all of you, starting pretty much exactly six months ago in Edinburgh on Arthur's seat, then moving 
driving over to LA Griffith Park to watch the sunset, the golden hour walking across the Brooklyn Bridge. It was an incredibly romantic vision. And ending up back just about five meters away uh, just a few days ago with some familiar faces and some new faces. I do really encourage you to, if you're close by, come along to one of these walks. It's not really to meet me or the other Spitfires, but just an opportunity to meet other composers in your areas. And this forms the second ambition I have for Spitfire and our community over the next decade, and that is the formation of nodes. Nodes are the intersecting kind of nodules between a network. I believe coming together is the future for us as a profession, for us to define our profession both now and in the future, not have it defined for us. You know, the horrific lawsuits that have been going on between musicians, the erosion of rights, these will only be cured by coming together. We have obviously a big kind of node or hub in London, there's one being built in New York, in LA, and that's something that's going to be really fascinating this year, which I'll involve you in, which is the creation of a node over there in Leith, in Edinburgh. And I spoke of the colossal highs, there, there have been lows. I've been a bit disappointed with my modular Monday output and want to kind of work on that. And of course, I haven't, well, even started my album yet, which has been a disappointment. I guess all of this pales into insignificance when talking about the loss of my father. He unfortunately passed away really just days ago after a really massively long disagreement, as he likes to refer to it, uh, with cancer. He's a very important character in my life, so much so I'm going to make a film about him for you because his impact on me with music is, is profound. I think the only thing I, I can say about him now really is for a father to have three sons who are professional and to a certain degree, and certainly in the case of my other two brothers, massively successful composers, without having been to music college, without having been to university, without really reading music, is a testament certainly to my father's record collection, his enthusiasm for music, his disdain for us ever becoming actors. Oscar, stop it! It's your sister. His disdain for acting as a profession, thanks for that, Dad. And his indifference, I would say, to authority born of a pretty horrible childhood spent in boarding schools. Yeah, love you, Dad. Uh, that's all I can say for now. And I guess one of the things that these things make you think about is um, your own mortality and your own health. And I think uh, a real um, thing that I'm really struggling with is the, the, the travelling. And so what I'm, I've decided to do is an epiphany, and I think this is something that I hope you think about, is to not become a victim, to actually go that you are actually in control of your own circumstance, not least being a founder of a big company. You know, I've been very guilty about having moved to Edinburgh, and, and, and that stops this year. I'm going to build a base here that people can come up from London to visit me. Uh, we can create community here. I want to become an employer in Edinburgh, in Scotland. There's an amazing city of Glasgow. There's an amazing music city just over that way. So let's lighten things up again and head back to the shed to look at my next selection of videos. My top five purchases, well, that's not entirely true because one of them was given to me, but my top five purchases of the year would have to start with This thing, the Game Changer Audio Sustain Pedal. Not only beautifully made, not only wonderfully easy to use, but something I seek from all of the equipment I buy is musicality. Yes, I've been a naughty boy, but Moog, they've still got it. The Sirin. This was a somewhat controversial video where I suggested that this is the must-have if you're going to buy a piece of outboard synthware. This is the must-have. I do stick by my guns there. Maybe not the Sirin. You could also look at the Minotaur, which is pretty much the same thing. It's just the oscillator doesn't go as high. For me, this nabs both the, the heart and the lungs of Moog, one of its extraordinary fat oscillators, but also its sought-after filter, which you can use as a kind of a filter box. The Polyand Sec, which is just a sick sequencer, so beautifully made. Look at all of this wonderful wood. You know, you can see that this, this is going to be mine. It's going to be original, but just intuitive to use and again, musical. 
My most popular video of all time, the Novation Peak. The Novation Summit, an extraordinary keyboard, one because it's very intuitive and musical to use, but also they have really invested in the people that they have got to do some presets. And I believe that I've been asked to do a preset kit for that next year, which I'm really looking forward to doing. It's interesting, this video was my second insight into how I could really make this YouTube channel fly. but. I don't have an interest in becoming a tech reviewer. And it may be arrogant to say this, but my hope with this vlog is not necessarily the videos themselves, but more the conversations that they spark. As I've always said, the, the heartbeat of this vlog are the comments that you write, and I thank you for them. So it is, I think, about a balanced diet of some tech reviews, some workflows, me ranting around the planet, and indeed uh, meeting and talking to new people. So what What's going to be number one? My favourite bit of kit of 2019. Well, this was recommended to me by a Mr Gary Barlow. The Otto Bam. A really, for what it is, an incredibly affordable reverb unit that bridges the gap between guitar pedals and outboard. This gives you that vintage digital sound. But again, it's its design, its character, its humour makes it a pleasure to use, and it's just so darn musical. But I think I've got something that's going to eclipse all of that kit. Bought it maybe a couple of months ago, but haven't shown it to you yet. But you may have seen it on one of the videos. What do you think that could be? <laughs> I did a call out yesterday, linked above. It's worth checking out just for the comments. Don't watch the video. Regarding what your kind of favorite purchases in 2019 have been. Thank you so much for being really polite and not putting loads of competitors' uh, sample libraries up. It's not what I intended. I would have been very interested. Uh, indeed, I think Omnisphere made a few appearances. Loads of Albion One buys. Well done. Really good choice. Um, and indeed, just a, a great selection of different Spitfire stuff. But also, uh, I enjoyed your comment about a pair of walking board boots and someone mentioned a large trampoline in their garden. Uh, good on you. Cheers. Do remember, though, that you don't need any of this stuff. As I've always maintained, a microphone and a computer is really all you need. And if there's any recommendation I would have this year, that is to make your own sounds. It is the easiest way to create what it is to be you. And that's something that I will strive for in my own output and would really, really urge you to do also. Follow your bliss and be yourself. It's not as easy as it sounds, I know. Be yourself because everyone else really is genuinely taken. But it's not just 2019 we're saying goodbye to. It's the teens as a whole. And when thinking about this last decade in Spitfire, I thought, well, you know, we're kind of 12 years old now. What is so special about this decade in particular? And when looking at our YouTube channel, I discovered that it was exactly 10 years ago when Paul posted our first video. So I thought I'd go through each year with one video that we've posted on YouTube and how, wow, we've got better over the years. The first being... mallets for Joby Burgess percussion. No voice, just the mallets captured in pristine 480p, the gentleman's video resolution. The following year spelt the birth of... Hi, I'm Paul Thompson from Spitfire Audio. Um, I'm going to talk today a little bit about Albion. Albion and the birth really of Paul's walkthroughs that he, well, it took quite a few years for him to develop this style of getting knee deep and dirty with our library simply because we released so little stuff back in those days. So in the same 12 months, we released Albion 2 and I gave our first behind the scenes insight into our working practices. And this is, I think, is kind of the spark of the idea of creating a channel of my own. The first time I looked down a lens. Hey there, this is uh, Christian from Sp Far audio. I wouldn't call that a beard. It's more of a kind of downy rim at the end of my face. Next up, the creation of a home. Hi, this is Christian from Spitfire Audio. We've got a rare opportunity here to document the construction of two writing and recording suites. Tile yard and the construction of our professional recording facility. I really was grappling with video technology back there. And whilst I do think this is a great guide to how to build a, an amazing recording studio, the camera work does leave a lot to be desired. And then we have what we call kind of mid-rooms 
which are about six to ten feet away, which just give you the sound with a bit of space around it. I think the things that make up a great sound is a great performance. What a total honour and just kind of a pinch me moment, us releasing Hans Zimmer percussion, something that took us a year to create because I believe back then there was only about six people, not even employed by Spitfire, six people associated with Spitfire. So it took an incredible amount of effort and thanks as always for the enthusiasm of someone like Hans Zimmer in supporting Spitfire Audio on the many projects we've done with him since. And the following year we did something totally bonkers. To be able to just look up and see the way the stairs go, just to be in that space and play those notes and be in this same air. Goosebumps, man, it was amazing. It was the benchmark. You know, that was the sound which, you know, so many people strive for and uh, just sounded like thunder. And we was like, wow. It's a once in a lifetime to be in this space and to be in this building is uh, something that, you know, will never leave me, you know. <laughs> so, thank you. It was the first time in about 40 years that musicians had been let back into the legendary Headley Grange. We took three of the world's greatest drummers to experience the sound that John Bonham created on so many seminal tracks there. Actually, to be honest, I had in mind to get in touch with you about this project before you got in touch with me. Our collaboration with Olafur really crystallised this idea that, that sample libraries weren't just about you know, virtual instruments. They're about capturing character and spirit of artists' individual aesthetics. I would love us to be, say, in 10 years' time at a point where we look back with incredulity at an age when we would buy sounds from people who didn't make music. The following year, I really got to play with the train set. I'd become fascinated with these fluty tones you can get out of strings, that kind of, imagine cellos playing high harmonics. I've been working and working and working with musicians over the years to instruct them how this thing that became the Spitfire flautando would be observed. So we decided to do it with knobs on, with tundra. And because a library that's kind of, quiet, just the quiet stuff sounded like a bit of a shit idea. Our marketing chief at the time, Will, who's now our CEO, sent me packing across northern climes of Europe and Iceland to try and explain this idea of a frozen library. One of my favourite telephone calls of all time has to be the one where Hans Zimmer well, his people ran me up and said, would you like to speak to him? And I said, yes. And he suggested doing a percussion library together. And I thought, we'll never beat that where random telephone calls are concerned. Until... The Always used buses in London, but he loved cars. And at the end of 1952 or early 53, he and Hitchcock... The Bernard Herman estate came knocking, or ringing, rather. And I'm delighted to say that this is their kind of a a secret that a lot of composers keep in their pocket. I speak to loads of people in LA and they say, oh, it's my secret source that I put on stuff. So with the Bernard Herman estate, we had established form in our collaborations. Being a fan of yours for many years, I'd built into my head this idea of a portly gentleman up in Dudley in the, in the Midlands, possibly in a lot of tweed. And a real highlight of the following year was us releasing Eric Whittaker's extraordinary choral library. And something, I guess, real highlight of that was Eric's dedication to the library. He conducted every single sample within that encyclopedic exploration of his aesthetic. And whether it be with Hans, with Eric, BT, the Fanshawe Estates, the Hermans, Sam Sim, Martin Ware, or indeed the LCO. This has become very much the heartbeat of Spitfire Audio, our collaborations. It is also a method of broadening people's horizons and the way that they use instruments, which forms the third ambition I have for Spitfire. 
which is to inspire a generation of music makers, to broaden everyone's horizons and to make people understand that whatever music it is you want to make, you can make. There is nothing to stop you. Not your background, not your family, your race, creed, colour, location, nor indeed your education. If you want to write music of any sort, you can. So what are your New Year's resolutions? Please put them in the comments down below. Is it creating that album? Uh, going out more for walks, getting fit, losing weight, that's another one of mine. Someone who I just assume is new to the vlog asked me, why, why does this kind of tech bloke um, always speak on the top of a hill or in nature, as he or she put it? And uh, the answer to that is, if it inspires just one of you to get out and about, and helps with your physical and mental health, then it is worth it. But I really always maintain the worst fucking place to write music is in front of a computer. Basically, it is a, a typewriter calculator machine thingy. This is where the magic happens. But also, this is where getting fit and healthy is so important because we're in it for the long game. Make your business sustainable. And if you cannot sustain your own health, you will not be able to sustain your business. And remember that your brain does not sit in a vortex. It is connected to your body. So happy body, happy brain, happy brain, great compositions. Thank you so much for your support. You're wonderful, supportive, sometimes critical, but always really useful comments to the contributors, to the supporters, to the suggesters, to the trolls, to the lovers and the haters. Have a wonderful 2020. I'll see you the other side. I love you lots. Have a healthy, happy and musical 2020.